forward. I'm not sure. He has in the past, and we're all ready to go. Bright day, warm sun, and uh, we should have a lot of speed out there on the field. These teams have relied on it all season. Well, I think you'll see a lot of fast running today. Brethren, uh, everyone here is expecting we'll see a lot of it. The ball is being teed up now on the Stanford 40-yard line. For which point, Wilkinson will kick off for Stanford. Let's see, we have Storm, Vic, Manugian, Garner, Bonetti, Pyle, and McCall in the forward wall for Stanford. Let's see, it's going to be Bob Myers kicking off instead. Bob Myers will kick off instead of, of uh, okay, so, so we're ready to go. Bob Myers, the starting fullback to kick off. Roller ball and blows the whistle. Here comes Myers forward, moving up to the 40-yard line, boots the ball, deep in the South Territory. Going back to pick the ball up on the final 10-yard line, and Johnny Karras is back to the 20. Hit at the 20-yard line, spins, goes over to the 25, and drops down on the 25-yard line, hit, and hit very hard by Roy Eady. Now let's see, for the offensive backfield for... The offensive backfield for the Pony Illini, they are on their own, make it 19-yard line. On the 19-yard line, first down and 10 yards to go for Illinois as they huddle. We have Tom McConnell in the backfield at quarterback, about halfback, Pete McCorris. At right halfback is Johnny Karras, the fullback is Bill Tate. Up to the line of scrimmage now, the tight team in the backfield behind the balance line. A tackle out to the right this time as he moves on the signal being called. The ball is taken by Connell, it's a feed off to his left halfback McCorris, through the left side of the line, over the 20. Five and up to about the 27-yard line with Al Kirkland making the stop along with Jesse Cohen defensively for Stanford. There's a Stanford defensive team in the lineup right now in the ball game right now. The lineup is Jack Rye at left end. We have Latham at tackle, King and Cole at the guards, and we also have Cook in the ball game. Kirkland and Edie in the forward wall. In the backfield, backing up, we have Ted Tanner and Chuck the seat. Tight team Illinois backfield, they send a flanker out to the right once more on their second down on their own 27-yard line. The ball is snapped back, there's a fake pitch out and a handoff again to the course, he's through the right side, up to his own 35, still in his feet to the 40, up to the 45-yard line, hit and drop at his own 46-yard line. Finally, Dick Horn, defensive left halfback of Stanford, was able to make the tackle. So it's going to be at first down and 10 yards to go for Illinois on their own 46-yard line. They took that ball from the 19 to their 46-yard line for 27 yards. So it's first down and 10 yards to go for Illinois. The ball is equidistant between sidelines on the Illinois 46-yard line. Up to the line of scrimmage now. Tight tee in the backfield and they hike out of it. They do send a flanker out to the left as the end to the left splits wide. The ball comes back to O'Connell. He feeds it off to Carlos. He's right around the left side up to the 50-yard line. Hit it to 50. Spins and drives over to the 47-yard line in the territory of Stanford before Roy Eady, defensive right end of Stanford, is able to make the stop. So let's see, that ball is brought from the 46-yard line in Illinois territory over to the 47-yard line in the territory of Stanford. Coming up for Illinois, and they have just about two yards to gain. Second and about two and a half. Ball about 15 yards into the sideline on this side of the field. There's a flanker out wide to the right, that's Johnny Karras. The end splits wide to the right. Ball comes back, and there is a feed off to the fullback. Tate is through the middle of the line, up to the 30-yard line, still on his feet, to the 20. And he's down to the 10-yard line, finally hit and dropped by Dick Horn on the Stanford 5-yard line. Bill Tate on a delayed line by hitting the right side of the line, right through right guard, kept back over on this side of the field, ran down the sideline, and makes it first down, 5 and goal to go for Illinois on the Stanford 5-yard line. Now let's see, that ball went from the 47-yard line down to the 5-yard line for 42 yards. 42 yards. It's first 5 and goal now for Illinois. There's a hike out to the right. See in the backfield. And the ball is being given down to Buck. We'll see he's cut back on the 8-yard line behind the line of scrimmage. Cut back on the 8-yard line. So he'll lose 3 on that play. It's second down coming up. Second down coming up and about... Six yards to go, second and six. Second six and goal for Illinois. Back in the huddle goal, Illinois. Signals are being called out now by quarterback Tom O'Connell. More from Chicago South, sophomore at Illinois, behind the balance line. Sends his flanker out to the right, that is Johnny Karras. Man in motion out to the left. There is a pitch back to Karras. He's up to the line of scrimmage. Hits no line and opening goes for touchdown for Illinois. He 
Luke Bakarich from the seven yard line on the pitch out swinging right around the left end with Bill Tate in motion in front of him to give him downfield blocking. Big Bakers makes a touchdown for Illinois. Sam Rebecca, the senior from Rockford, Illinois, and specialist at the point after touchdown has come in. He's going to try for the extra point. To hold the ball will be Don Engels. Don Engels, substitute quarterback, will come in to hold the ball for Sam Rebecca. Don Engels from Chicago, he's a senior. Ready to have the ball snapped back by Dan Sabino, the center. The score is 6-0 in favor of Illinois over Stanford. The opening moments of the Rose Bowl game here at Pasadena. The ball is snapped back, placed on the ground. The record moves forward. It's blocked. It's blocked by Don Sanders of Stanford as he came charging in from his flight position. So it's a blocked kick for the extra point. And that means that it's a 6-0 ball game in favor of Illinois. And say, while they're waiting, man, to uh, line up, I'd just like to say that shaving's a lot easier and more convenient with the Gillette Super Speed Razor. Rudy Valentino is ready to kick off for Illinois. On the whistle, he moves forward to the 40, boots the ball deep into Stanford territory. Down to the five-yard line, it's being taken by Mathias. He's coming over on the sideline, is hit and dropped finally on the 15-yard line. Comes back for about 10 yards as Bershay, defensive left tackle, makes the stop. So let's see, the ball is actually on the 16-yard line. Actually on the 16-yard line of Stanford. First down and 10 yards to go. Bob Myers comes back in at fullback for Stanford. Out goes Mathias. We have Ron Cook at right halfback. Harry Hagesian at left halfback. There is a blank tee out to the left this time. The ball comes back and is handed off by the quarterback to Harry Hagesian. He's through the left side of the line. Over his left guard up the 20-yard line to the 24-yard line. Before Chuck Porio backing up the right side of the Illinois line is able to make the stop. So the ball is moved up from the 16-yard line up to the 24-yard line for a substantial gain. There is another handoff in the backfield. This time it is 2-1, Cook to right halfback, and he tries to spin his way through the right side of the line, gets up to the 25, is hit at the 25-yard line, but Don Ernst, the right guard of Illinois, is stopped at that point. That means the third down will be coming up with three to go for Stanford. There are 15 yards in the sideline on this side of the field. Six to nothing in favor of Illinois. Now we'll see. Tight team this backfield this time for Stanford. There is a handoff. Very right quickly to Bob Myers who pounds through the right side of the line. He may have come up enough to make it a first down, but there's a fumble down there, I believe. And we'll see who has recovered it. Myers, the fullback, pounding through the right side of the line. The official, Raleigh Barnum, has come in to place the ball on the ground. It looks as though it may be on about the 27-yard line. It is enough for a first down for Stanford. On the 27, first down at 10 yards to go for Stanford. On their own 27-yard line. They are 15 yards in from the sideline on this side of the field. Six to nothing in favor of Illinois. There's a wide flanker going out to the left this time. That's Ron Cook in the T formation. There is a crossover handoff to Harry Hagesian, who tries to come through the middle of the line and is stopped at the line of scrimmage. Uh, Chuck Borio backing up the right side of the Illinois line, along with Elit Popa, certainly have been cracking in there and moving in more and fast. Illinois using a 6-2-2-1 defense. It's uh, second down coming up now, and about nine yards to go. Second and about nine, there's a wide flanker going out to the left. That's Ron Cook from Stanford. As the ball is taken back to Coy, he fades back. He's being chased, then gets a pass off into the plot. On the far side, he'll gaze in on the 30. He's up to his own 40, to the 44-yard line. Hit and knocked out of bounds of the headlines, but is also knocked down on the far side by a clip. On the 44-yard line, as Stan Wallace pushes him out of bounds on the 44-yard line. So there is a move from the 27 to the 44 of 17 yards for a first down for Stanford. So we're ready to go. Stanford having the ball, first down at 10 yards to go on their own 44, and a fine pass from Gary Kikorian, who right now comes out into the flat to the right on the T formation. He is the wide flank back. There is going fading back, going a long pass downfield, and is completed with the call on the 50, and he struggles and fights his way to the 45, loses the ball, there's a scrap of the whistle is already blown. It looks as though the whistle is already blown down on the Illinois 45-yard line, where it will be first down, 10 yards to go for Stanford from that point. First down at 10 yards to go from Stanford, from Stanford, from their own 44 to the 45-yard line in Illinois territory for a gain of 11 yards on that forward pass. The ball is equidistant between sidelines on the Illinois 45-yard line. Out of the huddle come the Stanford Indians. On the T-formation, the white flanker out to the right. The end split wide. 
Gagarin takes the ball and on a delayed line bucket is Bob Myers hammering into the middle of the line. Gets nowhere, absolutely nowhere, with Marvin Porsche in there to roll under low and make the stop. So it's still 6 to nothing in favor of Illinois, and Stanford has opened their passing attack against the Illinois ball club. And time is being taken out by Illinois. Time being taken out by Illinois with the score standing 6 to nothing in favor of Illinois. Well, say, men, tough beard is no problem when you shave with the modern Gillette Super Speed razor. This razor always gives you smooth, spick and span shaves quickly and easily. What's more, ingenious one-piece construction makes it the most convenient type of razor money can buy. Yes, the Gillette Super Speed changes blades instantly, cleans instantly, and shaves like a charm. There's nothing to take apart or put together. Nothing to jam or clog, and every stroke is light and gentle. For a world of shaving ease and satisfaction, buy a Gillette Super Speed razor. You get it with the 10-blade Gillette dispenser and a handsome styrene travel case that opens at a touch. Yes, men, and for this big dollar seventy-five value, you pay only a dollar at any convenience store. And we pause now, 10 seconds for station identification. Right back here at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, California. We have a couple of substitutions for you. We'll give them to you in a moment. Right now, Kokorian is operating from the chief feeds off to the right. Shoots a pass out into the flat. That is completed. Big... Again, okay, he's down to the 30-yard line in the territory of the Sunny Illini. A completed pass from Kokorian to Hagesian, the left halfback. He's down to the 30-yard line, moving from the 45 for a gain of 15 yards. And another first down at 10 yards to go. First and 10 for Stanford. On the Illinois 30-yard line, about 20 yards into the sideline across the way. Changes up front for uh, Stanford. Or rather, the fullback and safety man is Alfred Brusty, one of the fine ball players on defense. White flank key out to the right this time for Stanford on first and ten. There is a handoff in the backfield. Going through the left side is Ron Cook. Taking the handoff, moving over to the 30-yard line as Chuck Borio meets him at about the 28 and drops him. So it's second down coming up. Second down coming up. Let's see how much he did gain, actually. I believe a red flag went down on the field that time. We may have an unnecessary roughness penalty being charged against Stanford. We'll see that in just a moment. Where it'll be first down and 25 yards to go. First down, 25 yards to go for Stanford. They split the ends wide, send the flanker out to the left. That's Ron Cook. There is Kikorian fading back with the ball, looking for someone to pass to. He's being chased now. Runs off to the right, comes up to the 50-yard line. Stops, shoots one downfield, and is completed the big McCall on the 25-yard line. He's hit and dropped immediately. Make it for 24. No wonder this boy McCall was a lot American. He's up high in the air, and a 225-pounder can really get in there and go. So that pass completed from the 45-yard line to the, actually, make it the 24-yard line for a 21-yard gain. A 21-yard gain in the first down, and a rather second down, and just about three yards to go. Make it four yards to go. There's a flanker out to the left this time. Kerkoyan takes the ball, fades off to the left. He's looking for someone to pass to. Fires it across the line and finishes the play. He's on the 10-yard line. He steps back a couple of yards trying to get away from a tackler who's hit and dropped on the 14. Let's see, who made the tackle that time? It must have been Herb Nethery, the left halfback from Hoopson, Illinois. So it's enough for a first down. I believe, yes, enough for a first down for Stanford on the make it 13-yard line of Illinois. For Stanford on the... Illini 13, wide flanker out to the right this time. Kokorian, the quarterback, takes the ball, hands it off to his left halfback, Kogesian, who pounds into the 10-yard line, hit it to 10, and falls forward to the 9. Bob Lanzini, defensive left guard of Illinois, was under that close and low to make the stop. The official places the ball, however, on the 8-yard line. Second down coming up, and about 5 yards to go for Stanford. The flanker comes out wide to the right once more. McCall splits wide at right end. Kakoi in the center, takes the ball, hands it over this time to his left halfback, and that's Hugazian, he pounds through the left side, drives and butts his way up to the five, and that's where he stopped at the five-yard line, he falls forward just over the five, nose in to the four-yard line, but it is just nose over the five, so actually we'll call it the five-yard line. It'll be third down coming up and just about a yard to go. The stop was made that time by Don Ernst and Bob Lanzini, the defensive guards of Illinois. Third and two. Third and about two for Stanford on the Illini five-yard line, and Illinois leads six to nothing. There's Kukoyan in a tight two in the backfield, handing off this time to Myers, the fullback. He drives up to the one-yard line and stopped at the one-yard line. So that's going to be enough for a first down. First down, one yard, goal to go for Stanford on the Illinois one-yard line. That was Bob Myers on a direct butt to the left side, screwing left guard and left tackle. 
driving over on the left side, 15 yards off from the sideline across the way. Kaforian, Gary Kaforian, the quarterback, is called the signals. Play team in the backfield. Let's see who handles. There is the left halfback of Gazian through on the left side, over for a touchdown. in Pasadena, California with 4 minutes and 55 seconds left to play in the first period the score is all tied up at 6-6 six and six. now let's see who's going to try for the extra point here to hold the ball it will be number 25 who gave you who just made the touchdown and Gary Kikorian the quarterback will try for the extra point and he very seldom ever misses there is a red flag going down on the field as Illinois charges before the ball is snapped from its original point, we're ready to go. Here is the snap to be made. Back to the ball handler. And there is the kick by the coin. It's good. The score is 7-6 to six in favor of Stafford. about ready to go now with Stanford to kick off to Illinois and he's been sitting over there chewing on his hat brim ever since it started and I know he'll have plenty to say about this one there's Myers forward on the whistle boots for Stanford down deep into Illinois territory Johnny Karras over on the five yard line the far sideline takes a handoff as he comes scooting around the left side back to the 15 he's bottled in and knocked out of bounds on the 17 yard line on this side of the field by Cook Cook from Modesto knocked him out of bounds he was also helped on that play by Edie so well, let's see now. It is first down and 10 yards to go for Illinois. The ball is on their own. Make it 18-yard line instead of 17 as the official moves it forward by about another yard. In the Illinois backfield, Tom O'Connell at quarterback. At left halfback, Pete Buckeris. At right halfback is Johnny Karras. And the fullback is Bill Tate. A flanker goes out to the right this time as O'Connell is getting ready to handle the ball. He hands it off this time to his fullback, Tate, who pounds to the right side of the line over the 20, up to about the 22-yard line before he's stopped by Cook. And this boy, this boy Hart Cook, is playing in the left, on the left side of the Stanford line, his left guard. As I said a moment ago, he's a senior from Modesto, California. He's been in on most every tackle that has happened during the time he has been playing defense. There's a tight team in the backfield with a flanker moving out to the right. That's Karras. Ready for the ball to be snapped back to O'Connell. Back it comes. He takes a pitch up and hands it off to his fullback, Tate, who is through the left side of the line, drives, fights his way up to the 30. Still on his feet, still drives, and fights his way up to the 37. That's Cook. That's Cook. Making the stop along with Bob Latham. It's a first down and 10 yards to go for Illinois on their own 38-yard line. On the 38. So it's first down and 10 yards to go for Illinois. Let's check the backfield once again for you. At quarterback is O'Connell left. Back is Pete Buckeris. At right half back is Karras. The fullback is Tate. There is a flanker coming out to left this time as the end splits wide for Illinois in first and ten. The ball is handed off this time to Johnny Karras, who swings off the wing, tries to come through the left side and picks up just about one yard as he's stopped by the entire right side of the Stanford line, namely Cole, Kirkland, and Edie. So it is much of a gain on that one. Makes it second down coming up and eight yards to go for Illinois. The ball resting on their own 40 for a two-yard pickup. The ball is about 20 yards in from the sideline on this side of the field. On the Illinois 40, in favor of Stanford over Illinois. The difference has been Kakarian's extra point. There's a flanker out once again to the right. Collins takes the ball, pitches back this time to his fullback. Tate who swings wide at the left side, comes up to the 44-yard line, and goes out of bounds at the 44 as he's finally pushed out of bounds by Bob Thompson, defensive right halfback of Stanford. Cook was also in on that play. Well, let's see. The ball has been moved up now to the 44-yard line for a gain of four yards. Makes it third down, and we still have about four yards to gain for Illinois. We have a substitute coming in for Stanford. We have Skip Christ coming in to back up the left side of the line, replacing Ted Tanner. 6 2 one defense by Stanford. There's a... Right to the right, that's Johnny Karras as the end again splits wide. 
Rest of the backfield is in tight on the tee. There is a fake handoff, and finally the ball is given over to the fullback, Tate. And he piles through the left side of the line. Bill Tate, 187-pounder from Mattoon, drives the ball up to the 50-yard line with Skip Crisp making the stop for uh, Sanford. The ball is right on the 50-yard line for a pickup this time, six yards. So let's see how uh, much that's going to be. Well, there's going to be a penalty inflicted on the Illinois at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, California, with the score standing 7-6 to six in favor of Stanford over Illinois. In kick formation, standing back on his own 20-yard line, we have, let's see, that's Tom O'Connell. Widespread formation, and O'Connell fades back, shoots a long pass way downfield. That is almost intercepted by the left halfback, Dick Horn, but he isn't able to get his hands on it back on his own quarter. That ball was intended for Rick Smith, the right end of Illinois. So it's fourth and about 17 yards to go for Illinois. The ball being brought back, and time is being taken out by Illinois. The ball is resting on their 31-yard line. It is Illinois' ball. Fourth down and 17 yards to go with two minutes and 35 seconds left to play in the first period. Stanford leading Illinois, 7-6. to six. He plays second string uh, right halfback or third string right halfback on offense. Back in safety position, Sanders and Thompson, double safety for Stanford, standing back in the stand for 20 and 25, respectively. Hands out stretch down there on the 16-yard line. The ball comes back to Miller. The kid boots it. It's a high one coming downfield to the Stanford 35, bounces on the 35, rolling to the 30, kicks on back to the 25, crosses the 25, noses in, rolls down to the 18, and at the 17-yard line, rolls dead. 20 seconds left to play in the first period of the ball game that has Stanford out in front, 7-6. Now let's see, in the Stanford backfield, we have to call in Cook, Myers, and Hugazian. There is Ron Cook, way out wide on the flank on this T formation. There is Kikoyan feeding that ball off to his halfback, or his fullback, Myers, who takes on the cross, but coming through the right side of the line, he's met by Chuck Borio, who really came in and dropped him. Right at the line of scrimmage. Harry Hugazian was also in on that play. He was trying to do a little blocking. This Borio really came in. I want you to know that Borio bores in. Now we're ready to go here with Stanford moving. He'll send the wide flanker out to the left. That's Cook. There is a handoff this time to Harry Hagazian through the left side of the line, up to his own 25, hitting, spins away from two men, and drives the ball up to his own 27-yard line. Up to the 27-yard line for a pickup of just about 10 yards. And it's just close enough that the officials are going to have to measure to see whether or not it is a first down with a minute and 38 seconds left to play in the first period of a ball game. Let's see. It's being measured. It is short. Let's call it one yard again, although it's actually about a foot. The ball resting down there on the 27-yard line, just about the 27-yard line, 15 yards in the side on the side of the field. Tight tee in the backfield this time. There's the ball being handed off to Hagazian, and he hurdles the line over the 30 and makes it a first down on about the Stanford 31-yard line with Bob Waddell of Webster Groves, Missouri, the junior 210, making the stop for Illinois. It's going to be a first down and 10 yards for Stanford on their own 31 yard line. First 10 Stanford on their own 31. Score 7 to 6 in favor of Stanford over Illinois with a minute and 12 seconds left to play in the first period. Flanker out to the left is Ron Clark this time on the T formation split wide. There is Kikorian fading back. He's getting protection. Now he suddenly bottled up, gets more protection, and he finally straight under and knocked down back on his own 26 yard line. Cliff Wolbeater, the right end, came filtering through and made the stop on the 26. So there's a loss from the 31 back to the 26 to 5 yards. It'll make the second down come up 15 yards to gain for Stanford. They are 15 yards into the sideline across the way on their own 26. We have about 40 seconds left to play in the first period of the ball game. 7 to 6, favor of Stanford. There's a wide flanker coming out to the right again. It is Cook. Kakari up tight. Gary calls his signal. Feeds the ball off to Hagazian again on a fake handoff to his fullback. Hagazian coming across in the cross box. Takes the ball and goes through the center of the line with Chuck Borio there to meet him. So it'll be third and 15 coming up. Third down and 15 yards coming up for Stanford. The ball is about 15 yards into the sideline across the way. McCall splits wide this time up front. He's the All-American right end. Tight three in the backfield. Brian takes the ball, fades back. He's looking for McCall. Here comes a long pass downfield to him. McCall juggles the ball and finally takes it. Finally takes it on the 50-yard line. Steps out on the 49-yard line of Illinois. Big McCall gets that pass completed on the 49-yard line for a 20-yard forward motion. It's a first down and 10 yards to go. 
A first and ten. First down and ten yards to go for Stanford on the Illini 49 as Bob Mathias comes back in the backfield at fullback, relieving Bob Myers. Bob Mathias, the junior from Tulare, the decathlon champion. And there, everybody, is the end of the first period of the ball game. It's seven to six in favor of Stanford over Illinois. And fans, the best way to get tough beard ready for smooth, easy shaving is to give it a quick workout. Yes, and it keeps the bacteria count down. Enjoy shaves at our shave. Use K-34. On a swing off to the left this time, Gary Kakoyan carrying the ball. Swings wide to his left, moves down to the 40-yard line, is hit by Chuck Borio, backing up the line, and goes out of bounds on the 39-yard line in Illinois territory, and it is a first down. So it's first down and 10 yards to go. First and 10 for Stanford on the Illini's 39-yard line. 15 yards in the sideline on this side of the field. And we're having a substitute coming in the ball game. That's going to be Larry Stevens. Larry Stevens coming in for Walt Beezer. Larry Stevens coming into the ball game. Wide flanker out to the right this time. On the first and ten for Stanford. There is Kikorian on the running pass over to the right. Have it knocked out of bounds by the defensive halfback. Oh, Illinois, Herb Nethery. Herb Nethery knocked the ball out of bounds. It was intended for Ron Cook, the right halfback, on a wide flat downfield pass. And on the 30-yard line, knocked out of bounds. Well, let's see now. Coming out. Coming out is Harry Hedegian. Bob Myers is coming in the ball game. Bob Myers in the ball game. So we have Matthias at fullback now for Stanford. Bob Myers is playing halfback. He's the boy from Van Nuys. He's going out on the wing right now, out on the flat. From the key formation, there's a pitch out. So Bob Matthias, it's a wide swing around the right side. Matthias is cut back on the 45 yard line, make it the 44. As Larry Stevens came nicely in and crossed over to drop in there and make the grab on the 44-yard line. So that ball's moved back from the 39 to the 44. So there's a loss of uh, five yards. On the far sideline, on the hash marker, or the inbounds marker from the far sideline, the ball is placed on the 44-yard line. Hold down about 15 yards to go for Stanford. Sam Morley comes in at left end for Stanford, replacing Bill Storum. There is the coin fading back, going a long pass down the field and out of bounds at the 30-yard line. Oh, 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 for Sam Morley of San Marino. He's a sophomore. Larry Stevens had come over there along with him. Larry Stevens of Robinson, Illinois. He's a junior. Who is back defending. Now Dick Horn. 44-yard line. Dick Horn is apparently coming in to do the punting. It's fourth down at 15 yards to go for Stanford on the Illinois 44 there is Dick Horn going back in kick formation. He's a senior from Santa Monica. Standing back on the Stanford 42-yard line. Hands out, stretch the ball, is snapped back by Garner. He boots the ball, angles it to the corner. And going back is Brusky, watching the ball bounce into the end zone. And, of course, first down and 10 yards to go for Illinois on their own play. Up to the line of scrimmage, they come. Tight in the backfield right now. They may shift out of it. They do. Send a flanker out to the left this time. There is O'Connell, the Chicago boy, taking the ball, taking the pitch off, and then does hand off to Karras, who tries to come through the right side of the line. Moves down to the line of scrimmage and falls forward one yard after he's met by Kirkland and by Latham. So there's no gain actually on the play, so he'll put the ball again on the 20-yard line, move its position over about five yards to the sideline across the way, and make it the second down coming up for Illinois, and still ten yards to gain. Got about 13 and a half minutes left to play in the first half of the ball game. Um, O'Connell calling the signals again behind the Illinois line. It's balanced. There's a hike to the left this time with a flanker going out to the left. The ball is taken and handed off this time to Karras. Right sweep around the left end. Karras up near the 25-yard line as he cracks back from his interference. Johnny Karras is met at the 25-yard line and dropped by Skip Christ and also by Bob Thompson in the defensive setup for Stanford in the 6-2-1 defense. That's Skip Christ backing up the left side of the line. And Aaron Sanders is playing defensive left halfback. The Illinois ball club comes out of the left of the line of scrimmage. Sends a flanker out to the right this time. Ready for the ball to be snapped back to O'Connell. He gets it. Fades back. Hands the ball over this time to Pete Bucker. It's back to the right side of the line as he follows a one-man interference. Cracks off tackle but picks up just about one yard as the hole finally closes with Hokesian coming in there. O'Kanson, rather. Well, let's say the ball is resting now on the 27-yard line. Move up to the 27-yard line where it will be fourth down and about two yards to go. 
Ball on the 27-yard line in Illinois territory. They have about two yards to gain here, so they'll probably go back in kick formation. Let's see, it'll be Ken Miller. He's just come into the ball game. Ken Miller, the punter, sophomore. He's standing back on the Illinois 14-yard line. There is Sanders and Thompson in double safety for Stanford. They're back on the Stanford 30-yard line right now, spread across the field. We're ready now for the ball to be snapped back to Miller. It is snapped back to him. He gets the boot away. It's a nice one coming downfield. Starts to wobble a bit now. Bounces on the 40. Moves down to the 30-yard line. The ball is still rolling end over end and goes to a stop on the 23-yard line. Bob Mathias apparently is remaining in at fullback. No. Oh, is that right? Mathias at fullback? Yes, he is. He's in there at fullback. Now from the T formation, the ball is being handed off to Bob Mathias, who tries to crack over the right side. And he's stopped by Andy Wojciak and Marvin Bershay. Andy Wojciak and Marvin Bershay. Wojciak from Chicago, Bershay from Arlington Heights. So the play actually lost a yard for Stanford. It means that um, they're back on that 22-yard line with second down about... ...seven yards to gain. About 20 yards into the sideline across the way as they send a flanker out on that sideline in the tee in the backfield. McCorian takes the ball, fades back, shoots a pass across the line, finish to Mathias on the 25, he's in the clear on the 30, finally cut from behind and the side on the 34-yard line by Wojciak and drop. Bob Mathias, who has been having trouble with his ankle recently, wasn't able to get away despite the fact that the pass was completed to him and he went nicely down to his own 34-yard line. It's still a first down and 10 yards to go for Stanford. Down on the 34-yard line of Stanford. That was a gain now, but 12 yards on that one. So it's first and 10 for Stanford as the... Red and white team comes out up to the line of scrimmage on the 30. The ball equal distance between sidelines on their 34. Let's see, there's Krikorian fading back again. Shoots a pass out in the foul again intended for Mathias. And it's over his fingertips untouched. Untouched. So the ball will be brought back again. Placed at its original point on the 34-yard line. Where will be second down coming up for the Stanford Indians, and they still have 10 yards to go. Let's see defensively in that backfield, as we'd like to tell you who they are for Illinois. They're defending against passes. We have um, Herb Nethery at left halfback, Broski at uh, safety, Stan Wallace at right halfback, and we have Borio and Popa backing up. There's a wide flank around to the right for Stanford this time again. Corian fades back to his own 25, runs off to the sideline to the right to the 30, and he's being cut back on the 30-yard line. He couldn't find anyone to pass to, as the red flag went down on the field. Down, down, down back on the 30-yard line for a loss of four yards. And let's see what the red flag is going to designate down on the field. Whether it will be against, it's a, it's a shooting penalty, apparently. Uh, and there's going to be... Um, a completion ruled on that uh, last play, apparently, as uh, Mathias was shoved out of the way as he was trying to receive the forward pass. So the ball will be placed down on the 41-yard line. On the 41-yard line of Stanford, where it will be second down coming up. Well, let's check that and make absolutely certain. Now we're ready to go, first and ten for Stanford on their own 46. Corian hands the ball off to Hugazian through the left side on the handoff play. He pounds up to the 47-yard line to the 48, twists and goes over the 15, finally drops down on the 49-yard line for a pickup of five yards. So it'll mean uh, second down coming up now. Second down, five yards to go for Stanford on the Illinois 49-yard line. Oh, is about 15 yards in from the sideline across the way. It is 7-6, Stanford over Illinois. Wide flanker out to the right this time, that's Ron Cook. Gagarin takes the ball, fades back. Gary's about ready to shoot it. Downfield it comes, it's completed to Mathias on the 40-yard line of Illinois. He's down to the 30, to the 25, to the 20, and hit and dropped at the 20. Hit and dropped at the 20-yard line. Mathias taking the pass. So that ball goes from the 49-yard line. Down to the 20-yard line for a pickup of 29 yards, and it's first down and 10 yards to go for Stanford. And it was figured before this ball game started that Stanford likely would take to the air, and they've been taking to the air here this afternoon. The ball is resting on the 20-yard line, first down and 10 yards to go. Double flanker this time. There's Krikorian coming back, 
ready to shoot a pass, and he finds no one to pass towards the red flag, goes down on the field. He drives himself down to the 16-yard line, and is finally hit and stopped down there by Larry Stevens. But a red flag has gone down on the field, and uh, we'll have to know, we'll have to uh, wait for the moment to see whether it's going to be uh, Stanford or Illinois to draw the penalty. We're having a substitute in the line for Illinois. That's going to be Cliff Waldbeezer coming in for Stanford. He's the Van Nuys Jr. He's replacing Harry Hugesian. He himself goes out on the flank this time. In the T formation, Stukorian takes the ball, swings wide, strikes himself, and is being bundled behind the line of scrimmage and finally hit and dropped on the 26-yard line in Illinois territory for actually a loss of the yard. It was Bob Lanzini coming in there with Chuck Borio making the stop for Illinois. Bob Lanzini, the North Chicago sophomore, playing defensive left guard for Illinois, and Chuck Borio, Kincaid, backing up the right side. He's a senior at 190 pounds. So in the six-man line, the 2 defense, those are the two that are operated on that one. So it's second down coming up and 16 yards to go for Stanford as they send two flankers out, one to the right and one to the left. The team in the backfield has Kirkorian coming back, trying to throw a long pass downfield. He holds it himself and he scores right down the middle, running through the 20-yard line, bubbles the ball, and it's recovered on the 21-yard line by Stanford, I believe. Cliff Waldbeezer was in on that play. The ball was fumbled on the 25-yard line, rolled forward to the Illinois 21, and it was Ron Cook. Ron Cook came in to recover for Stanford on the 21-yard line. So that's uh, one way to do about five yards. So it's only 3 and 11 now, third down and 11 yards to go. So actually Stanford, I guess, was using 11 men and two pups. So we're ready to go here now with third down and 11. Third and 11 for Stanford, moving down to the 21-yard line in Illinois territory. Third and 11 for Stanford, wide flanker out to the right this time. McCall is put way wide at right end. Kerkorian takes the ball, the quarterback looks for McCall. There's a long pass going way down deep, and it's knocked down. It's knocked down by Herb Nevery, down on the 8-yard line, the far sideline down in the corner. Herb Nevery knocked that one down. It was intended for Bob Mathias. So an incompleted forward pass has Stanford in possession of the ball on the Illinois 21. 15 yards in from the sideline on this side of the field. They have fourth down and 11 yards to go, and with 8 minutes and 42 seconds left to play in the second period, the score stands 7-6 in favor of Stanford over... Okay. So we're going to have a field goal try. It'll be Gary Kikorian. Gary Kikorian with a vision holding the ball. He'll try to kick this one from the 28-yard line in Illinois territory. There's the snap. There's a kick by Kikorian. Is it good or isn't it? It is short. It is short. So... The score still remains, Stanford 7 and Illinois 6, 7-6. So well, the ball will be brought out now, placed on the 20-yard line. Illinois in possession, first down and 10 yards to go. So the teams are coming in. Get ready for this one. And by the way, men, now let's see if Illinois can get going here. Stanford leads it by a point, 7-6. Paul McConnell, their quarterback, has a tight key in the backfield this time. Switches in wide, sends a man out in the flank, that's Karras. From the 20-yard line of Illinois territory, O'Connell takes the ball, feeds it off this time to the first through the left side of the line as he disengages himself from his interference, crashes from the 20 up to the 25, spins as he's hit, and drops to the 26-yard line by Chuck Gasegian, who is backing up the right side of the Stanford line. He was helped by safety man Don Sanders. So the ball comes from the 20-yard line up to make it the 26-yard line for a gain of six yards, makes it second coming up. And about, actually about three and a half yards to go. Illinois operating from the T, sends a flanker out to the left this time. That's Pete Picaris. There is the quarterback, McConnell, handing off to take the fullback who pounds through the left side of the line up to the 30 and hit and dropped on the 31 by Skip Chris. Skip Chris from Palo Alto. He's a junior at 190 pounds, backing up the line. So the ball is moved up to the 31-yard line for a first down for Illinois. The ball is equidistant between sideline on the Illinois 31-yard line. I'd say right now that coming over the Sierra Madre Mountains here, a little bit of a haze. And First down, 10 yards to go for Illinois in their own 31, equidistant between sidelines. Right end comes out wide, that's Rex Smith. Wide flank back off to the right this time. It is the quarterback coming back, going a jump pass to Vakaris. He's reaching down the sideline on the far side of the 40, and finally slips and falls on his own 45-yard line, running into his own interference. On the 45-yard line, 
One of those little screen passes just grouped over the head of the on-rushing defenders, and it was completed. The beat, Bacharis. I'll spell his name again for you, B-A-C-H-O-U-R-O-S. He's a junior from Chicago, Bacharis. We had uh, three or four pronunciations of his name. Bacharis taking the specific forward pass. Down to the Illinois 45-yard line. Well, that means a gain of 13 yards on the play and a first down for Illinois. Ball is 15 yards into the sideline across the ways again. The wide flanker comes out to the right as Rex Smith, the right end, splits wide and comes over also. There is the quarterback, O'Connell, fading back again. He's another one of those little to get it, scores on the receiving end. He's down to the 50-yard line and hit it to 50, knocked right back to the 49-yard line. And I mean he was hit by a C. Jim, the defensive right linebacker. So the ball is moved down now to make it to 49-yard line. So actually it's good for four yards on the play. Four yards on the play and time is being taken out by Stanford as the ball rests on the Illinois 49-yard line with six minutes and 23 seconds left to play in the ball game. The second down coming up for Illinois. Four men, Pete Bacharis, and he has uh, really snagged those two little looping passes to very good advantage. 15 yards into the sideline on this side of the field. Illinois goes into the tee, sends a flanker out to the left. O'Connell calls his signals. The ball is snapped back to O'Connell, and he fakes a handle, finally gives it to Karras. There's a wide sweeper on the left side. The All-American drives down to the 40-yard line. It's hit at the 40-yard line in Stanford territory and picks up two more as he moves to the 38 with Hokinson hanging on with Bob Thompson to bring down Johnny Karras. And it's another first down for Illinois on the 38-yard line in the territory of Stanford. Good for a 13-yard pickup that time on the part of Johnny Karras. The ball is about 20 yards in the sideline across the way. Bobby O'Connell has called his signals now with five minutes and 50 seconds left to play in the first half. Sends a flanker out to the right this time on the T formation. Ends are in close. The ball is given this time to Bacchus. He's through the right side of the line, cracks his tackle, moves over to the 34-yard line. It's hit by Chuck Asijan, backing up the line for Stanford and dropped after he picks up one more yard down to the 32. Jack Rye. Of Los Angeles, a senior 200 pounds playing defensive left hand rolled under there to make the stop. Also, the ball is on the make it 33 yard line. Ball on the 33 yard line for a pickup that time of five yards exactly. Makes it second and five. Coming up for Illinois on the Stanford. They're 15 yards into the sideline on this side of the field as O'Connell holds his backfield in tight, then sends his end Rex Smith out wide as he pulls his flanker over to the right, takes the ball, fades back to the 40-yard line, shoots a spot pass right across the line of scrimmage that's almost caught by Rex Smith on the Stanford 18-yard uh, line. Skip Crist almost had his hands on it when uh, Rex Smith had it bounce off his chest, but it goes as an incompleted forward pass and will be brought back to the 33-yard line where it will be third down coming up for Illinois. They'll still have five yards to gain down in the sta on the Stanford 33. It's still 7-6 to six in favor of Stanford over... University of Illinois, and this is the 38th Rose Bowl game being sent your way over NBC from Pasadena. Tight tee in the backfield. Let's see if they shift. They do this time. It is Buckers who is the flanker out to the left. The ball is being handed off to the fullback, Tatey, through the left side of the line, drives through the 20-yard line, and carries two men with him down to the Stanford 22. Finally, Don Sanders, the safety man, had to come up the hall, Bill Tate down. That's a first down and 10 yards to go for Illinois on the Stanford 22-yard line. A pick up that time of 11 yards. Down on the 22-yard Stanford line. Stanford still using a 6 2 one defense with four minutes and a half left to play in the first half. There's a tight team. Off to a flanker over to the right this time. Does Illinois behind the balance line. The end is split wide. There is a fake handoff. Then finally it's Picaris who takes the ball on the direct handoff and butts into the 20-yard line with Latham, King, Chris, and Cole all making the stop for Stanford. Ball is moved right down to the 20-yard line for a two-yard pickup. Right down to the two for a two-yard pickup. Makes it second down coming up for Illinois. Eight yards to go in this series of downs. Ball is equidistant between sidelines on the Stanford 20-yard motions that the clock is to continue running. It does now. The ball is on the 20-yard line. Second down and eight for Illinois as they are about ready to come out of their huddle once again. The Seijin calling the signals for the Stanford defense as his team move into a 6-2-3 defense, actually. There's a high count to the left by the Illinois left end. There is the quarterback coming back to throw a forward pass and he's pulled under and knocked down as he tries to get his pass away. 
back on the 34-yard line. It was Roy Eady of Berkeley, the right end, who came back in there, knocked him down just as Tom O'Connell was starting to get the pass away. So um, it's Ron Eady coming in to knock the passer down. It goes as an incompleted forward pass, and the ball is seen taken back to the 20-yard line in Stanford Territory, where it'll be third and eight. Third down and eight yards to go for Illinois. The ball is equidistant between sidelines on the 20-yard line. Up to the line of scrimmage. On the balance line, goes O'Connell to call his signals on a tight T. Sends his flanker over to the left as he splits his left end wide. O'Connell ready to take the ball. He does. Fades back to the Stanford 28-yard line. Can't find anyone. Then throws into the end zone. Over the fingertips of Joe Bernasco in the end zone. Joe Bernasco almost had that one in the end zone, but couldn't quite hold on to it. So it'll be fourth down and eight coming up for Illinois on the Stanford 20-yard line. Well, we still have three minutes and 33 seconds left to play in this ball game in the first half. And I tell you, when uh, Braven Dyer told us originally that we could expect a thriller here this afternoon, he wasn't kidding. Sam Rebecca has come into the ball game for Illinois, and that can mean only one thing, that the Illini, he's right in front of the goalposts. He may or may not be able to make it. Right now, it is Stanford 7, Illinois 6. We're waiting for the step to come back from Dan Sabino. Here it comes. It's placed by Ingles, kicked by Rebecca, and it is no good. Wide to the right. It is no good. The score remains Stanford 7 at the University of Illinois 6. 7 to 6. The ball is being brought out to the 20-yard line now, given to the Stanford Indian. It will be first down and 10 yards to go for Stanford from their own 20-yard line. And now, along with uh, Irv Gustafson here, let's uh, check that backfield. Let's see, that's uh, Kikorian back at quarterback, isn't it, Irv? Yeah. Let's see, Kikorian. Bob Mathias has come in at fullback now, and we have Ron Cook at right halfback, who has gone off to the flank. And just as we line up, we have a substitute coming into the ballgame, Don Tate. Don Tate. There's a wide flanker going out to the right this time on first and ten on the 24 Stanford, and the handoff this time goes to Harry Hugazian, who is through the left side of the line and bucks his way up to about the 23, where he's stopped by Chuck Borio and Hopper. Backing up the left side, of Popa. Backing up the left side of the line. Let's see, the ball is being placed down on the 24-yard line for a pickup of four yards. So in the ball, in the forward defensive wall, we have Wojciak, Bershev, and Ernst, Don Tate, and uh, Larry Stevens for Illinois. There's Kakarian backing up to shoot a forward pass. He's been stopped. He's been caught back and fumbles the ball on his own 15-yard line, and I believe Illinois has recovered it. And they will have possession of that ball if the whistle did not blow before the fumble occurred. So let's see. The ball is being placed on the 15-yard line and given to Stanford because the whistle had blown before Kakarian fumbled the ball. The play was Marvin Bershay and Don Tate. The two tackles converging, moving in there fast. Push back from the stop, so it's third down and 15 yards to go now for Stanford. Back on their own 15-yard line. There goes uh, Ron Cook out on the flank on the left side this time. Mr. Kikorian takes the ball, Gary Fetty back to the five, being chased. He runs to the right, and first throw is passed on his left down by Joe Bernasco and Chuck Borio, both coming in. That was intended for Sam Morley, the left end of Stanford, and the pass was almost intercepted. Chuck Borio is the fellow who had his fingers on it. Joe Bernasco was the man I thought for the moment who had gotten in there, but it was Chuck Borio. Chuck Borio, we have about two minutes and 15 seconds left to play as Dick Horn comes into the ball game for Stanford. Dick Horn, the punter. Gary Kikorian, the passer. Let's see who goes back in kick formation. It is Dick Horn to stand back on the stance of three-yard line and go into safety position. Is Herb Nethery and Alfred Broski for... Illinois. There's the ball back at the bad pass from center. He picks it up, gets the kick away. It's a nice one coming downfield anyway. And it's taken on the 45-yard line by Herb Nevery. He spikes his way back to the 50-yard line. The 50-yard line. With two minutes left to play here in the first half of the ball game with Stanford out in front over Illinois, 7-6. Now well, let's see. It's first down and 10 yards to go for Illinois. Get that ball on the 49-yard line in Illinois territory. On the 49-yard line, the ball is put it between sidelines. Call the 
Rutgers for Illinois. Sends the flanker out to the right this time. Splits his end. Rex Smith way out wide to the right. Sends his left hand out. We're ready for the ball to be snapped back now to quarterback O'Connell. Takes the ball. Fades back. He's looking for someone to pass to. Shoots it downfield. There's a completion over on the 40-yard line. And it's Rutgers who snaps his way over to the 35-yard line on the far side line as the season finally stops him on the Stanford 34. So there's a move down to the 34-yard line in Stanford territory. So that means that it's a gain of 17 yards on the 34-yard line. First down, 10 yards to go for Illinois on the Stanford 34. Send a tight team to the backfield this time behind the balanced line. There is a fake handoff. It is O'Connell fading way back. Shooting a pass downfield. This time to Vernasco on the 30-yard line. He's hit and dropped immediately by Skip Chris. So there's a pickup from the 34 to the 30-yard line. Right 34. That means a second down coming up. Right down to the 30-yard line. That's where the ball is resting. 15 yards in from the sideline on this side of the field. One minute left to play in the first half of this ball game. The 38th Rose Bowl game in Pasadena, California. Second and seven coming up for Illinois. That's Barkerus. The ball is taken by O'Connell. He fades back. Shoots a long pass way downfield. There goes oh, 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 right. He dropped the ball. Joe Vernasco from Bishwaka, Indiana. Drops the ball on the goal line. Going back there with him was Bob Thompson. That was quite a forward pass. That would have been a uh, 30-yarder. Right down to the goal line. So the ball is being brought back now to the 30-yard line in Stanford territory. In possession of the score is still 7-6. Stanford over the University of Illinois. They come out of the huddle on third and seven up to the Stanford 30-yard line with about 45 seconds left to play. They send a flanker out to the right this time with O'Connell calling the signals for Illinois. Takes the ball, fades back. He's looking for someone to pass to, gets protection. Fires one that is knocked down at the 15-yard line. Knocked down at the 15-yard line by Don Sanders, the safety man. The ball was intended for Rex Smith that time. But Don Sanders had that one diagnosed correctly. We have about 39 seconds left to play in the first half of the ball game. Score is 7-6 to six in favor of Stanford over Illinois. We've had a dandy here so far in the first half. Wouldn't have missed this one for the world. Glad we didn't have to miss it. Let's see, the ball 15 yards in from the sideline on this side of the field. 40, about 39 to 40 seconds left to play as Illinois sends a flanker out to the right this time on the tee. O'Connell calls the signals, fades back. He's going to try another forward pass, fades on back to the 40. Spots one across the line of scrimmage that is knocked down again by Sanders. Don Sanders, the safety man, knocking it down. So that was fourth down and seven. That means that Stanford takes over on their own 30. So it's first down and 10 yards to go for the Stanford Indians on their own 30-yard line. They are leading here with 32 seconds left to play in the first half of the ball game. The score is 7-6. to six. Raven Dyer will be talking plenty about it at halftime. As he's over there, um, well, his fence is riding just about as fast as anybody as you ever saw. There's Stanford sending a flanker out to the right this time on first and 10 on their own 30. It's Kukoyan handing the ball off to fullback. Matthias, and he tries into the center of the line on the delayed line, but can gets nowhere with Marvin Bershay making the stop for Illinois. So we have about 22 seconds left to play. There's 20 seconds left to play. 18 now. The seconds are ticking away here in the first half of this ball game. About 12 seconds left to play. Stanford still back in the huddle. They lead 7 to 6. 9 seconds, 8 seconds. They come out up to the line of scrimmage. Send a flanker out to the left this time. There is Kukorian fading back with two seconds left to play. One second, he's being bottled, gets a pass away. There's McCall leaping high in the air, and the ball is intercepted by Broski. The sideline coming back to the 20 yard line, to the 15 yard line. Hit and dropped on the Stanford 15 yard line. Broski on an interception. Almost run away as the clock ran out here in the first half. Bob Mathias finally caught Broski and saved. The touchdown. So at the end of the first half, it is still Stanford 7 and the University of Illinois 6. And we have had quite a first half here at Pasadena. Well, everybody, I said a minute ago, we've had a tremendous first half. 
A lot of people have been uh, jumping right up from the seats. And I said a few minutes ago that he was chewing at his hat brim, and I wasn't kidding. This guy, Braven Dyer, has been seeing a game that he has so far predicted. Braven, how about this first half, buddy? Well, you take a little breather there. You've been working just about as hard as those players out on the field. And the score is Stanford 7, Illinois 6, in a uh, tremendous game in which Illinois scored first, missed the conversion, and then Stanford scored, and Gary Kakorian kicked the conversion, making the score 7 to 6. That all happened in the first quarter. Then in the second quarter, each team tried a field goal. Kerkorian first from the 28, it was short, and then Rebecca from the 27, and it was wide to the right. So that's the way she stands 7 to 6, and we have some prominent sports figures here to talk to you at halftime and tell you what they think of this game. First of all is that very famous and wonderful sports writer from New York, known all over the world, Grantland Rice. Granny, how do you see the game thus far? Brilliant, uh, Braven, I think this is really one of the most brilliant first halves that I've seen anyway. I mean, each using his own type of phrase, the Illinois attack is a beautiful running attack. Didn't you think so? Yes, it is. And I think Stanford's passing attack is one of the finest things I've seen, especially the calls, handling two plays, almost impossible. Can you look in your, into your crystal ball and see anything uh, for this half other than more thrills? Any particular prediction? I don't believe any. I don't believe the old Delphi Oracle I used to know very well could pick this game the way it's going. Anybody can win. Well, I'd agree with you on that. And we're very happy to have you out here, Granny. And we hope you'll be back time and time again to see the Rose Bowl well, game. Thank you, Braven. It's always nice to come back just to see you. I'll tell you that. But this game today is really worth seeing because this is a very fine football game. But no prediction on the second half. No, I couldn't make it, Braven. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Grantland Rice. Uh, Granny has seen uh, a great number of the Rose Bowl games. And uh, he writes uh, some very wonderful articles about football and all, all other sports. I know of no my, a finer man in uh, sports writing today than Grant and Rice.